Do you ever wonder as you wander, why do animals all move so differently? Hi, it's Carrie from the Wilderness Center. And if you're like me, maybe you've wondered why animals all move so differently and look so differently. First, let's talk about why animals move. It's not just a case of boogie fever. They don't feel like going for a jog because they're feeling a little sluggish. Animals typically move with purpose. And while there are other purposes out there that might make them move, there are two really big important ones. Animals either move to find food or to not be food for another animal. They do this through their adaptations. That's a big word, and it means a change by which an organism becomes better suited to its environment. Welcome to the pond at the Wilderness Center. Behind me you can see land, water, and air. And most of the time, animals are adapted to have bodies that move and can live in these three separate places, even though sometimes they overlap. Like I could swim, but I couldn't live in the water. And a bird could walk, but their bodies are really meant for flying. And if I see a fish get out of this water, walk over and give me a high five, well then I'm really gonna worry. Let's talk about how animals move through each of these three places. First, the land. Animals have so many adaptations for land We'll just talk about a couple of them, and we'll think about food. Rabbits are a very tasty little animal, lots of predators. So in order to not be eaten, rabbits need to be fast. They can run up to 30 miles an hour. But the animals that eat them need to be even faster. Coyotes can run 40 miles per hour. See how that works? Meanwhile, a turtle just carries around its own protective gear so he doesn't need to be very fast at all. Frogs are a special type of animal called an amphibian. Their bodies let them live on land and in the water, so they've got strong legs for jumping and special feet for swimming. Let's take a dive into the water and learn about how those animals move. Animals that live in the water have some special features to help them swim. Like frogs, they have special limbs for moving through the water. They have streamlined bodies, meaning narrow on the ends and broader in the middle. They also have a swim bladder. The swim bladder in a fish works like a balloon. If that swim bladder or balloon is full of air, that fish will be able to swim towards the surface of the water. But if that swim bladder or balloon is empty, that allows the fish to go down to the bottom. How cool is that? Birds don't have bladders to help them decide how high to go in the sky, but they do have incredible adaptations. Like fish, their limbs are special. You know them as wings, and the strong muscles help them move their feathers and soar through the air. They also have very lightweight bodies, so they can actually get up off the ground. Another adaptation that helps birds be lightweight is that their bones are hollow. I've got one more air adaptation to mention. Birds have streamlined bodies just like fish, and it's very important. Don't believe me? Let's do an experiment. All you need is two plain pieces of paper. Take one piece of paper and crumple it up. Easy, right? Then take the other piece of paper and make your very best paper airplane. Don't get too fancy. Just keep it simple. Now let's compare these two models of flight. First the crumpled one. How far do you think this will go? Will it fly very well? Is it very streamlined? Oh, what about this one? How would this one compare? Make your best guess. That's our hypothesis. Which one do you think will fly better? Well, how did your experiment turn out? Did you prove your hypothesis? You may have thought you were just throwing around some paper, but in terms of the adaptations and how animals move, you are doing some real science. What other adaptations could you make to your paper airplane if you wanted to improve its flight? Hmm, something to think about until next time when we wander and wonder together again.